about my three pound beetle weight combat robot ring spinner Q. Um, Q was uh, heavily inspired by another uh, beetle weight ring spinner by Metal Skull Robotics, and that bot was called Orbit. Um, I will put a link in the uh, video description uh, below, uh, but if you like ring spinners, you should definitely check out Orbit. It's a really uh, awesome combat robot, and uh, I definitely uh, learned a lot and, and um, uh, sort of took, took a lot of inspiration from that uh, bot in making Q. Um, Q is a uh, invertible design, and it's a two by four wheel drive. Um, it features an S7 tool steel uh, ring, and then uh, the other components are uh, 7075 aluminum, glass filled UHMW, and carbon fiber. Um, I machined uh, all the parts myself on a smaller hobby mill, uh, except the carbon fiber parts, which I had outsourced. And um, it was finished just before the 2019 uh, Motorama competition, which was just a few weeks ago. And it did, you know, okay, not great. Uh, he had one win and two losses. So definitely some issues and some bugs to, to be worked out, but uh, hopefully I can do that in the future. But um, I've got a lot of footage about the making and um, would love to talk about uh, some of the design aspects. So uh, let's uh, jump right in and um, check out Q. So here's Q and CAD. Um, all the CAD and CAM for Q was done on Fusion 360. I'm continuing to enjoy uh, learning Fusion 360. And um, uh, let's see, I can talk about uh, sort of the layout and uh, kind of what's going on here. So uh, Q's a, an invertible ring spinner. So this green ring is uh, spins around. Um, it's invertible, so you can see that the uh, wheels uh, stick out above and below, so uh, there is no sort of top or bottom. He can sort of drive around in, in uh, either direction. Um, and let's see, yeah, there's uh, carbon fiber uh, armor on the top and bottom. Um, I can uh, remove that so you can get a sense of the layout of uh, what's going on. Uh, it's, uh, I'm using uh, brushless motors uh, through a little gearbox, a planetary gearbox, and uh, uh, driving this wheel, and then there's a belt driving the front wheel, so there's effectively two by four wheel drive. Robert Cowan uh, has a very good video about the making of this exact combination of motor and uh, gearbox, so I will put a link to that in the description uh, below. And, um, yeah, let's see. Uh, so this is the drive system. You can see it on its own here. Um, I ended up using some uh, Fingertech pulleys. Now, this was actually the first thing I machined, and I'll, I do have footage of that. So this was a fin Fingertech pulley that I had machined this hexagon out of, and then that uh, uh, allows it to key into these uh, BaneBots uh, hubs. And um, uh, so that's what's going on there. And... Uh, what else? Um, I can show you how the ring is being constrained. So there are, um, let's see if I can hide this. That's the top frame, and then we'll hide the uh, bottom frame. So there are 18 ball bearings holding this ring in place, constraining it so it just can rotate. It can't move up or down or, or side to side. Um, there are six uh, 19 millimeter urethane coated bearings here, and then there are 12 11 millimeter urethane coated bearings, six on top and six below. Um, so you can see that the uh, the 19 millimeter bearings constrain it radially, and then the 11 millimeter bearings uh, constrain it uh, axially. Uh, so there's just the tiniest of gaps, um, and yeah, that's how the uh, ring is being constrained. This is a friction drive, so this ended up being some O-rings that were glued onto the outrunner of the motor, and uh, there's a tiny little bit of uh, interference here that's uh, creating friction and um, uh, driving the ring around. Um, this is a 30 amp uh, ZTW uh, speed controller for the motor, for the weapon motor. This is a thousand milliamp uh, battery pack, and 
Uh, over here is the uh, receiver for the system and then two smaller uh, ESCs to power the, um, uh, the uh, drive, these drive motors. Um, I machined these, uh, these are aluminum frame or drive motor rails, uh, machined out of 7075 aluminum. And um, it's all pretty tightly uh, packed in here. Um, show the uh, frame again. Um, you know, it's, it's very tight to the point where the belt is kind of going above and below uh, some of the frame right here. So that's uh, uh, getting tight. Uh, the wiring ended up taking more space than I uh, imagined. So um, it all ended up uh, kind of getting crammed in there, but it did, it did all fit. And um, uh, yeah, why don't we just show you the making of uh, some of these parts. So I started by 3D printing the uh, frame and drive rails and then moved on to machining this Fingertech pulley. Um, I was machining this out uh, into a hexagonal shape so that it would fit one of the uh, Bainbot double wide hubs. And um, it uh, fit pretty well and, and there's enough room for a wheel and a pulley. So uh, this looked pretty promising. I then um, machined the uh, drive motor rails with uh, acrylic. And this is really just to check the you know, fit of the overall system, see if the motor fits in and how it mounts. Um, and then I was able to bolt that into the PLA frame and at least do a quick uh, drive test. And it, it, it seemed to do pretty well. Um, it was fairly controllable and uh, uh, things were looking good. So um, I then moved on to machining the rails out of 7075 aluminum. That's the first operation. Now I'm flipped the part over and doing the uh, second operation. And um, there's actually a third operation, which you see here, which is drilling the, uh, these holes that uh, bolt into the frame. And um, uh, yeah, so they came out um, looking pretty well uh, and I was pretty pleased. So then it was moving on to other parts. Here's the frame to Q in CAD. Um, the frame is actually made up of two halves that are uh, identical, a top half and a bottom half. Um, and uh, yeah, I thought I could talk through some of the uh, features of this. So I had, knew I wanted to machine this from the beginning. So I did sort of, I was thinking about that when I was designing it. And so all the features or most of the features you can access from um, the top or the, uh, the bottom. When you're machining, you really are, you know, holding something in the sort of X and Y plane and then you're uh, coming down into it um, in the uh, sort of Z. So you really need to be able to access uh, features directly uh, to, to machine those. So again, most of these pockets and profiles I could get um, from you know, the, uh, the top or the bottom. Um, there were going to be a couple of tricky things. Um, you'll see that the, the uh, uh, axial bearings, uh, these 12 or six, uh, six on each side, those are held in with, um, you know, held in by uh, screws, but I can't access those from either the top or the bottom. So I think it was looking like it was gonna be, um, I'd need to do, figure out some way to be able to, uh, you know, access these uh, directly. So that was gonna be something to figure out. And then, um, this also turned out to be a little tricky for the same reason. These are um, uh, pockets. I needed uh, some holes to hold uh, bearings. The, these bearings are what hold uh, the uh, drive axles in place. And again, for the same reason, those were gonna be tricky to, to make. I could have tried to come at them um, kind of down into them, uh, but I decided to uh, just split the feature and kind of make the the pocket in two halves and I could come in here with a ball nosed end mill and just profile those. Um, I was a little worried about you know having this sort of seam I mean ideally you'd have that bearing uh, completely captured in material but um, for various reasons again it made sense to sort of split it and so I did have these holes uh, which would allow me to put some uh, screws and uh, nuts uh, to kind of sandwich and um, hold, uh, give some support around those bearing, uh, bearing holes. 
So um, yeah, that's uh, the Q's uh, frame. I thought it'd be fun to show the making of the frame halves. Um, so it all starts with a big block of glass filled UHMW. This is about one and a quarter inches thick. Band saw that out and then I mounted up on my mill table. Here I'm um, drilling some holes to uh, hold the plate down with bolts. Then I can uh, face it off. And uh, now we get started into the real uh, cutting. Uh, so this is obviously very accelerated just to try and make it uh, move along. Um, this is accelerated up, you know, 20 or 30 times as fast as it normally goes. But um, uh, yeah, just starting to cut uh, various pockets and profiles. This is on the underside of the uh, bot. Uh, it's cutting the uh, little axial bearing uh, pockets. Now it's doing some um, uh, material removal just for lightening, uh, cutting these uh, pockets on the bottom just to, to take away material for weight savings. Um, and I think that's it for the uh, first operation. Now I need to uh, pry it up and um, that's what it looks like uh, after that first operation. There's a fair bit of deburring necessary, but um, it cleans up. I flip it over and uh, face it off again. This is the second op. Um, and then again, we start uh, profiling and uh, doing various pockets and cuts. Uh, these are uh, areas around the bearings, the uh, radial bearings. Uh, again, very accelerated and I have to keep blowing the camera off because chips would fly up on it and, and block the view. Um, so it's uh, moving along uh, and uh, now it starts doing the kind of angled face uh, that, you, that you see when you look at the bot. Um, it uh, first kind of goes around, does a rough pass and, um, and then it starts uh, progressively moving around um, and uh, creating that uh, kind of sloped face. Uh, it does have to rise up around the bearings as you see but it's uh, zipping around now doing a finishing pass. And um, here's what that looks like uh, in real time. Uh, again, you see it's just moving around and uh, kind of cleaning up, um, cleaning up the surface. So it kept doing that, moving around. And um, it's almost done with that. And a couple little uh, drill drill operations and then it's ready to come off. So this is what it looks like when it comes off the mill. There's a thin skin of material that's still in place and that's on purpose. That's to help hold the part in place. And then I just uh, take an X-Acto knife and um, trim, trim that uh, skin away and then that piece, the center piece pops out and you've got uh, half of the frame. So I'd have to make another one of these, but they were identical. So it was just rerunning the program. Um, wasn't quite done yet though. I still had to make those axial uh, bearing uh, holders, those for the 12, 11 millimeter bearings. And there's a little pocket here that's gonna be helpful. So I'm, I'm making a fixture plate and um, this is a 90 degree uh, fixture, fixture means. And just with some sticky tape, I can stick that fixture plate up against it. So now I've got this plate and uh, with some bolt holes, I can now screw the frame directly into that plate. And so now it's being basically it's held 90 degrees uh, upright. And um, uh, this, uh, once I can uh, use an edge finder here with that little pocket I had made, I can get a uh, uh, sort of a Z0 position and come in with a small end mill and make those um, the uh, pocket for the screw that will hold it's a shoulder screw that will hold in the um, that uh, axial bearing so it was a fair bit of work to just get this uh, little hole then I would do one and then I'd uh, unscrew the screws rotate the part around and then do it again and I'd have to do that six times for each um, half. A few operations on the motor to modify it to get it to fit into the uh, robot. I had glued these O-rings on and then I had to machine this, uh, these little plates to hold the weapon motor in place. Um, press fit bearing, that's before and then after the press fit. Uh, again, this is for the weapon motor. 
And uh, then it was off to the water jet cutter. I had my S7 steel. I had those rough cut on the water jet cutter. Um, but I needed, I really wanted a finished surfaces on the you know, inner and outer uh, profiles of this weapon. It was critical to have a, a precise diameter to run up against the bearings. And so I laser cut this uh, jig or a little sort of fixture plate. And um, these little tabs allow me to get a kind of a, a, a nice um, X axis positioning and uh, press that down and I can get a approximate center um, with an edge finder of the uh, uh, the weapon ring and now I kind of know where the part is in space. Uh, I use some toe clamps uh, to hold it down and now I can come in and do that uh, inner diameter uh, pretty accurately. Um, then I would move the clamps to the inside and uh, then I could cut the outer diameter, outer profile with the tooth. I'm using a, um, a hard mill, end mill here, and uh, machining the S7 steel really wasn't too bad. I, again, I wasn't removing a lot of material. It was l less than a millimeter, um, and I just went uh, you know, fairly slowly, but uh, it came out. Uh, one of them came out well. I had two rings, and I messed up one, so I was only had one ring, but uh, that, that, that turned out to be enough. Um, and then it pops off and uh, that weapon ring is basically done, a little bit of cleanup. And then I did have to have it uh, heat treated to 54C uh, Rockwell. Um, uh, did a little weapon test just to see that uh, things were working. There's a separate video dedicated to a weapon test and you'll get to see how fast it goes. It went pretty darn fast faster than I expected, so check that out. I'll be a, there'll be a link in the video below. Um, but it all seemed to be working, and um, this is how it all came together. Uh, some uh, studio shots, I, and uh, you know, it, it, it all looked uh, looks pretty cool. Here's all the wiring in place. Again, it was really a, a battle to fit everything in there, but it, it, it did just fit. Uh, there's the friction drive. I epoxied the uh, the motor battle hardened it and um, so that's q uh, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time